Hey sixth graders, sorry I can't be at school with you today. We are going to go through a few sections of notes that we wanted or that I wanted to do on Thursday, but then we had the whole goofy internet situation and I don't want you to have a ton of note taking to do on Monday. So we're gonna go through some sections that we should have already covered, things that you've read in the book already. We'll start with tensions rise, um, the events leading up to the US Dakota War of 1862. You read in the textbook that traditional Dakota were frustrated and angry because the farm Dakota were basically being favored by the US government. The government gave them more food, more tools and livestock um, because the farm Dakota were doing exactly what the government hoped they would do and they wanted to encourage other Dakota to do the same. The traditional Dakota also blamed the farm Dakota for abandoning their heritage. <clears throat> they said they'd given up on their traditional beliefs and lifestyle. Some Farm Dakota genuinely believed in the things that they were doing. They wanted to convert to Christianity. They preferred the style of clothes that they were starting to wear, while others um, made those changes because their hope was that changing the way that they looked and living in a brick or a wooden house would protect them, that the government and settlers would leave them alone if they were starting to blend in. So if you look at the picture on the screen here, um, you should be able to see some evidence of traditional Dakota culture, right? Like the teepee, but you also see a lot of evidence of the Dakota adopting some European ways, the style of house in the background, the clothes they're wearing, um, and the shorter haircuts are just a few examples. The U.S. government, you read, was often late with payments of money, food, and supplies. Remember back um, in an earlier chapter, we learned about annuities, those annual payments of goods um, that had been promised in the treaties of Mendota and Traverse de Sioux. When the government was late with payments, the Dakota looked to the traders at um, the upper and lower agency, hoping that they could get those food and supplies on credit. So they would take the things they needed and pay for them later when they finally got those treaty payments. In 1862, the traders shut down the credit system entirely. And they basically said, if you can't pay for it now, you don't get it, which left the Dakota in a lot of trouble because they didn't have the payments they'd been promised in the treaty and they were starving. They needed the food and supplies. In August of 1862, um, by that point, the Dakota were very hungry they were very frustrated and they were angry. Because they weren't eating a regular healthy diet, their bodies couldn't fight off illness. They got sick easily and they were no longer allowed to leave the reservation to hunt. So their resources were very limited. In the picture over on the right here, you can see um, that the top portion, this lighter orange portion of the reservation is what they had to give up in 1858. The lower darker orange portion of the reservation is what they were left with um, after 1858. So it's a very narrow 10 mile wide strip of land. On August 17th, 1862, four young Dakota men killed five European American settlers near the town of Acton in an argument over eggs. And that is ultimately what triggered the US Dakota War of 1862. The traditional Dakota you read on Thursday debated about what to do, whether they should hand their um, fellow Dakota over to the US government or whether they should strike out at their enemies and attack. Little Crow, pictured here on the right, spoke for peace, but he agreed to do what his people wished and lead them into war. You can see in the picture, he had adopted some of the European American ways, but still kept longer hair um, and definitely was closely tied to his uh, Dakota people. On August 18th, Dakota soldiers attacked the Lower Sioux Agency and killed several traders, including um, Andrew Myrick. More than 300 people, including women and children, were killed in the attacks in the first two days. The Farm Dakota did help arrange the release of European Americans held prisoner by traditional Dakota. Um, the Farm Dakota had ties to both groups, right? They were linked to the Dakota because of course they are members of the same tribe but they were also connected to the European Americans because they've been adopting their ways and building relationships. So they were able to help negotiate there. 
Hundreds of settlers fled their homes and they became refugees seeking safety, which means that they fled rapidly. They took what they could carry and nothing more. Um, so they probably had the clothes on their backs, maybe food for a night. Um, they left family treasures behind. They left a lot of tools and equipment that would have been helpful. They didn't have a source of shelter. The battle at Fort Ridgely is pictured on the right. That was a key event. Uh, attacks by the Dakota on August 20th and 22nd were defeated. And in the picture, you can see two buildings that are on fire. Those are the stable and a store. The Dakota were not able to take over either New Ulm or Fort Ridgely. Settlers and soldiers there defeated um, them in both places. Nine days after the fighting began, Colonel Henry Sibley led 1,400 soldiers to battle the Dakota. It was definitely not an even battle. The Dakota were defeated at Wood Lake on September 23rd, and around 2,000 Dakota surrendered to Sibley's forces. Hundreds more fled from Minnesota in hopes of avoiding being captured. A total of 70 U.S. soldiers, 75 to 100 Dakota, and 500 settlers were killed. Hundreds of farms were left empty as 20,000 settlers fled for safety. Towns were completely devastated. We read that in the textbook yesterday that New Ulm was basically leveled. This picture of refugees um, was taken after they fled the Upper Sioux Agency on August 19th. Missionary Stephen Riggs is in this picture. We will pick up with notes on Monday. I will post this video in Schoology, so if there's anything that you missed, feel free to go back and um, review it and complete your notes. And have a great weekend.